Hello everyone and welcome to what will hopefully be quite a quick video today. I have got a new lens for my XS10. Um, here it is. Uh, this is the Fuji 50 to 230 millimeter XC lens. Um, you may well have heard about this lens if you're interested in cameras, particularly Fuji cameras. Um, this is a very lightweight, relatively inexpensive, long range, longish range telephoto lens. Um, there are many good uh, reviews of this lens on YouTube, so I don't expect this video to be definitive or authoritative at all. But I thought one thing that I could do that might be of interest to some of you is to put out a video out there um, showing the first time I used this thing in anger, um, which was uh, a couple of days ago now when I went to the cricket at Lords. Uh, which gave me the perfect opportunity, I thought, to see what this thing can do um, when you're trying to get some longer range shots that you might not be able to get with a slightly shorter range, even a zoom lens, um, if it doesn't go all the way to 230 millimeters, which this thing will. Um, so obviously the only point of reference I really have, as I'm relatively new to photography and lenses, um, is the lens that you're watching this on now, the lens that's recording this footage, which is the XF 16 to 80 millimeter, which obviously gives me a much kind of uh, wider range at the, well, a much wider focal length at the 16 millimeter end, um, but only goes out to 80 millimeters, which when compared to this going all the way to 230 millimeters, this gives you a lot more range um, though admittedly is, well, if you believe some of the things that people say out there is a less good quality lens, I mean, build quality is, is quite clearly a little bit worse, um, more plastic than metal, but in terms of image quality, which is probably what most of us really care about, this, I think, gives very, very good results for the price, or at least it did on that one opportunity that I've had so far to test it. So um, I thought that what we would do in this video is I will talk you through some of the shots I got when I went to the cricket. Um, I got some video. Um, admittedly, the video I got is not the perfect test of this lens handheld because I did use a gimbal, um, but yeah. We'll, we'll talk through the footage when we get to it. So uh, yeah, just wanted to introduce this by telling you that we're going to look at some shots that were taken on this. I used this lens the entire time I was there at the Cricket, so I didn't use the lens that you're watching this on now, the XF 16 to 80 millimeter at all for the Cricket. So everything you'll see was taken using the XC 50 to 230 millimeter lens. Um, yeah, without further ado, Let's jump into it. If you do like this video, if you do find it at all helpful, please do like and or subscribe. Thank you very much. So one thing worth noting, and which I hope will be helpful, given uh, the information that I found it quite difficult to find when I was researching this lens, is an idea of the actual reality of how close this lens lets you get to your subject. So on this day, watching the cricket at Lords, I was, let's say, approximately 90 metres from the players on the actual pitch, the, the middle of the ground, um, where the batsmen stand and, and score runs. Um, so about 90 metres from that, but obviously a lot less from the fielding players. So when you see a photo of a player close up who's not a batsman, who's a fielder, um, that is likely to be significantly less than the 90 metres. So probably, you know, anywhere between 30 to 50 metres for the fielders. Um, possibly even less than that, in some instances, probably closer to 20, maybe even getting below that meters, um, because we were sat right on the edge um, in the tavern stand labeled on this map. Um, so that's just to give you an idea of physically where I was as compared to the players that we're going to see some photos of and some footage of in this video. 
So this first image is actually a good example of that. This is obviously a fielder, uh, much closer than the 90 meters. I'm only zoomed in to 128 millimeters here, so significantly less far than the lens will go if pushed. Um, this is shooting at an aperture of f6.4. So uh, as you can see um, at this focal range, this is kind of perfect because we can actually get some out of focus background so you can see the Lord's Pavilion in the background nicely blurred. Um, so we've got the subject in focus and the background slightly blurred. Now this next image is a good uh, demonstration of what the lens can do if you push it even further. This player Colin de Grandhomme was stood just a little bit further away than that previous fielder. Um, so I would estimate this is maybe at 40 to 50 meters away um, and I've zoomed in all the way to 230 millimeters so this is the lens fully extended and as you can see we still get an, a fairly sharpish image of Colin um, the to the extent it's not sharp that's really user error rather than the lenses error so this image is as I say at 230 millimeters an aperture of f8 um, so we've stopped down a little bit. I think that was intentional. I think I was trying to clean up the image a bit. Um, but as you zoom in, this lens will actually uh, automatically um, downgrade your f-stop anyway. So you, you can't get massively quick aperture speeds at the, the further end of the focal length. Next is an image of a player who is just walking onto the ground, uh, his teammate having been dismissed. And I think here I was probably at about... 60 meters at least maybe 70 meters from the subject and as you can see it's nice and crisp this is zoomed in to 230 millimeters here just using the default aperture that it will stop you down to at that focal length which is 6.7 next an action shot of garten bowling um, this was actually quite a good image considering the amount of movement that's going on at this point when you think that he's probably bowling that ball at you know upwards of 80 maybe even 90 miles an hour and I'm very happy with the extent to which the motion in this picture is stopped, frozen at that point just before release of the ball. Um, you can see the, the batsman at the other end uh, of the pitch also looking back at him. So I really like the way that this caught what's going on in that moment of the game. As I said earlier, these players at the pitch in the middle of the ground are at least 90 metres from me, if not more. But that said, we're actually not at the full 230 millimeters here. We're at 217 millimeters according to the metadata, um, which I don't know why I wasn't fully zoomed in. I guess I was trying to catch the bowler running up, so I'd only gone into 217 millimeters. But as you'll know, um, it often pays actually not to be at the very extreme of your given focal length. And here we're operating a tap aperture of f6.7 again so that's the default that it stops you down to when you're at this end of the range so now just to round out the video uh, we can look at some of the video footage i captured and what i think will come through here is that this lens allows you um, with the right maybe equipment but also the right approach um, to get some very smooth very stable video so one thing that this lens has um, definitely in its favor despite the relatively low price point is that it does include optical image stabilization now to go with that i should note that as i said earlier i am using a gimbal for this video footage so i'm using the xeon webill s but any um, dji gimbal or similar would obviously achieve a similar effect and also the xs10 the camera body that i'm using has in-body image stabilization as well. So there's a lot of different stabilization technology going into making this footage as, as stable as it is, but you can't do that without the lens also being capable of providing good quality stable imagery. And even if you're not using it for video, this optical image stabilization will, will assist you in getting sharper images, especially at a longer telephoto focal length. So definitely not something to be sniffed at. Um, really is excellent that this lens has optical image stabilization. So does my other lens, um, as that's an XF lens, you would expect that really. But th this lens includes optical image stabilization at such a low price point is really quite impressive. The full speed clips here are full 4K 8-bit 
uh, captured in F-Log and color graded. Uh, whereas these slow motion clips, which I think were quite cool, um, are the XS10's 240 frame per second option. So those slow motion clips are only 1080p, um, although I don't think that that is hugely noticeable, particularly when the video is upscaled to 4K anyway. Um, obviously there is more resolution and more quality in the full speed clips, but uh, just one cool demonstration of what the XS10 can do if you want to use its super slow-mo option 240 frames per second, which effectively captures at 60 frames per second, then slows that down by a multiple of four. So as you can see, the lens is performing really well um, at this range and with all the stabilization applied that I spoke about earlier, I thought some of these shots were really nice and really show off um, that this lens gives you plenty of, to use a hackneyed phrase, bang for your buck, um, really good value. For these last few clips, I'll leave you with the full video sound. Uh, I did invest in a good microphone after all, so I'll let you hear what it was like to be at Lords that day. Well, there we go. I hope you did enjoy this video. Um, like I said, I know that there are far better reviews of this lens out there and I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you in particular, although he almost definitely will never see this, to Steve Meller, whose videos about using this lens for um, for wildlife photography, um, where he took it to a few zoos and provided us with some really good um, sample imagery, were probably the, the the videos that were responsible, the reviews that were responsible for me deciding to take the jump and, and buy this lens. Um, and I hope, I can only hope that this video uh, does something similar for anyone out there who might be thinking about this lens for sports photography. Not that anything that I captured counts as good sports photography. I'm not purporting to have done anything particularly good with the lens, but I did, I did want to demonstrate to you what it is capable of. Um, just to give you a little bit of a sense of, you know, if you're this far from a sports event that's going on, um, you know, like I say, 50 to 90 meters, maybe slightly more than that in front of you, would this lens, this lens here, be a good option for you? And um, I think, hopefully, that what I've demonstrated is that it may well be. Uh, and you can't say fairer than that, or at least I can't now. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Like I said earlier, if you did enjoy this video or find it helpful, please do like and or subscribe. Thank you so much. Goodbye.